So neural networks are um, in fashion again. So they were fashionable in the 60s, then back in the 80s, where web propagation has been invented. Then more and more sophisticated algorithms, learning algorithms and architectures have been invented to, you know, to some degree they were successful, but then they went out of fashion. And I don't know, maybe five years ago, um, neural networks came back into fashion. And now um, the major difference is they're somewhat deeper, um, but still mostly feed forward. Um, we use the most primitive learning techniques from the 80s, um, namely backpropagation, um, with some tweaks, um, but much bigger networks, much more data, and that seems to work great for many problems. Can they achieve AGI? Um, difficult to say. I mean, our human brain is a big neural network, so it is plausible that a big neural network, if the architecture is right and the learning algorithms are right, can achieve AGI. Um, just using deep neural networks, um, definitely not, because these deep networks, you know, if you have 100 layers, they produce, they perform 100 computational steps, which is definitely not enough, you know, for, say, playing chess. If you think about the next move, you do, you know, a lot of thinking. Um, so we need some recurrency in the neural networks. Also, um, the neural network is only one part if you have an agent problem, right? If you just have a classification problem, you just use a neural network. But if you want an agent interacting with the world, um, you need to train it in a certain paradigm and usually use reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning plays, I would say, maybe an equally big role in achieving intelligent agents, not so much for classification, regression, and so on. Um, but, you know, you hear deep neural networks in the media, but less so reinforcement learning. I wish sort of there were more sort of... Um, uh, praise or uh, recognition um, of the reinforcement learning part. So the DQN um, is a reinforcement learning algorithm, you know, just using deep neural networks as a function approximation, but it's a reinforcement learning paradigm um, similarly for, for AlphaGo. Um, so uh, I think that's a very valid approach. Um, the question is, can we just by, you know, designing recurrent neural networks, so four, four feet forward will not work, um, reinforcement learning, and then, you know, playing around with it, looking at the human brain, whether it's a succeed or whether we need some new principles which are missing. And my personal, personal gut feeling is that there are a couple of principles which are missing, but not too many. So I'll give you one example um, from physics. Um, so if you just write down sort of some equations and you know, you're not careful, you know, these systems explode or die out. At some point we realized, you know, energy is conserved. Um, also physical systems conserve energy and that is very important. If you approximate these equations and you're not careful enough to preserve energy in the approximations, you know, the system will die out or explode. So energy conversation, conservation is absolutely crucial for your simulation to work. Um, in neural networks, I'm not so sure, probably the backpropagation um, uh, doesn't have this problem about the spiking neural networks. Um, if you're not careful, you know, either you have too much activity or the activity dies out. You have to control for it somehow. So, I mean, this is just, you know, very simple thing. So maybe we need some conservation law of activity in a neural network and we have to be really ensure that this is satisfied. Um, maybe that's a principle which is important, very important, crucial. And possibly, and I guess, you know, there's a couple of more principles which we don't know yet, um, which, uh, which are important for making things work. <laughs> <laughs>